Well, more names are in the transfer portal, and this one has a big one. Simeon Barrow, arguably the best player on defense. He jumps in for the fourth time. Who can we be upset about? Uh, what does this mean for Michigan State? And also, yeah, Chucky Hepburn transfers from Wisconsin. What does that mean for Michigan State basketball? Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Spartans is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on the classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or Google Play. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked On Spartans listeners, thank you all so much for tuning in to Locked On Spartans, your team in green and white five days a week. Please rate, review, subscribe, do whatever makes you happy. And if you are watching on YouTube right now, hey, Comment a question or two. We might have time to get into a few of them at the end of this show, which is a big one. And yes, as you would notice, we are still in the laundry room. That's right, the hottest laundry room in Southwest Florida. And yesterday, if you remembered, I said that, well, yesterday's show was going to be the last one until this weekend, unless, you know, some crazy news broke that we had to get to. And (laughs) would you have it? Michigan State's Simeon Barrow for the fourth time in his career, again, arguably Michigan State's best defensive player, dives into the transfer portal. So yeah, uh, that is worth talking about here. Also, Marquis Lowry, he jumps into the portal too. That is certainly going to be impactful for Michigan State's upcoming season, and then we'll get into a little bit of basketball talk, but... Oh, yeah. Uh, not the greatest news to hear uh, about Simeon Barrow. Let's just you know go over the stats right now. Back-to-back Big Ten honorable mention player, defensive lineman. I'm sure you guys all know this by now, but last year, 36 tackles, three and a half tackles, four loss, and three and a half sacks. And again, I'll keep harping on this, but uh, here's a stat too. Four. Entries into the transfer portal for Simeon Barrow. So we're going to talk about, you know, what this means as far as the landscape of college football or also how Simeon Barrow has handled this last few years here. But first, let's talk about what this means for Michigan State next year. Again, arguably the best player on defense. And when I say arguably, like I genuinely mean that. Certainly Derek Harmon. We'll have to say something about that. I mean, God, he plays the same position as Simeon Barrow. You also have guys like Jaden Mangum, Malik Spencer, Dylan Tatum. Like, there are still talented guys on this roster on the defensive side of the ball. But let's you know shoot everyone straight here. Simeon Barrow is a wrecking ball at defensive tackle. So what this means now is, yes, you still do have Derek Harmon. You have Daquan Douse. That's a transfer that you got from Georgia Tech, the guy that started nearly 10 games for the Yellow Jackets down there. That's who you would presume now to be your two starting defensive tackles. Now behind them, yeah, you have Maverick Hansen. That's a name we all know by now. He's back for his sixth year at Michigan State. Could it be a guy that you know was kind of unheralded coming into Michigan State? Ben Nelson, a guy that came here as a walk-on offensive lineman who actually got some reps at defensive tackle to end last season. Could you see him in the two deep? Could it finally be time for Alex Van Sumeren, his time to shine at Michigan State? And we just talked about Alex Van Sumeren not too long ago. But yeah, sure. Like He came here as that you know top 300 player, four-star recruit, a great recruiting uh, win as far as in-state regional battles go. That's a guy that's had two significant leg injuries early on in his career. His development already stunted by injuries and just lack of playing time early on in his career. So what can you get out of there? This is just a long way of saying that this isn't good. I know I'm shattering a lot of people's minds right there with saying that your back-to-back Big Ten honorable mention defensive tackle is a player that you don't want to lose in the portal. But look... Again, I, I want to reiterate this. You, you, you don't want to lose Simeon Barrow, right? But when you get a guy like Daquan Douse out of the transfer portal, and this is just you know, one site that is saying this, Pro Football Focus, a very good site, that had Douse as a 13th best or 13th highest ranked defensive tackle in the ACC last year. The drop-off from what a Simeon Barrow to what Daquan Douse is isn't as steep as you might typically find it from losing a guy like Barrow to who you would find in the two deep. But look, again, I, 
I'm not saying that, oh, good riddance to Barrow. We don't need you anyway. But no, like it sucks. But with what they did in the winter portal window with Daquan Dows, or also two guys like uh, Quindarius Dunnigan out of Middle Tennessee State. Now, I don't expect him to be a three down defensive tackle. The way Quindarius Dunnigan is built, you probably have him just for pass rush situations, certain lawns, what have you. But nevertheless, what they've done in the winter portal can soften the blow of what Simeon Barrow does with entering the portal yet again. Now, of course, we'll do this whole sauna dance. Can he come back? Is that a possibility? Well, sure. I Like, he, he, he has proven that himself. Like, he's done it three times. If you can get the same guy to recommit out of the transfer portal four times in his career, i got to be doing something here. But before we rail on Simeon Barrow, and I don't even think there's much railing to do here because what I want to harp on, what I want to blame here, is the system. Guys, I, I am going to be one of the people that just look at the college football landscape and just kind of point to the system as to being the problem. As to how, not even why, just how a kid can enter the transfer portal four times in his career, especially after what has transpired the last few months. And guys, honestly, to shoot you straight, look, I bleed green and white just like you. Do I want to see this happen? Absolutely not. I think I've made that very clear the last few minutes, but... If I was an advisor or an agent or a family member of Simeon Barrow, I'd probably be doing the same thing again because this is what the system allows players to do now. We've talked about this many a time when it comes to Transfer Portal. NIL is, folks, this is professional football now. And you could just take the word football away from it. This is a profession now for these young men, for these kids. And just like me and you, in our walks of life, many a times, what is the best way to get a raise in many industries is by hopping around company to company, football program to football program. Or let's say, for example, you don't want to leave your company but my God, you can add an extra 15 or 20 or even more percent to your paycheck. What's the best way to do that? It's it's oftentimes not going up to your boss and saying, oh, hello, I would like more money, please, with, with no competing offer. No, many times, guys, and I'm sure a lot of you have known this by now. You can go apply for another job, come back with another offer saying, hey, boss, Thinking of jumping ship, this is my offer. Can you match it? This could very well be what is going on here with Simeon Barrow. But even if it's not the case, this is the best way to get pay bumps. And this is very prevalent in today's age of college football. Is okay. This is great. Yes, I've been in the transfer portal three times. Yes, I've gotten a pay bump in this offseason to stick around for a few months under Jonathan Smith. But, huh. What else could possibly be out there? Do I still want to stay at Michigan State? Perhaps if they want to match any offer. But, again, maybe it's not all about how the system is. Because, look, I, point blank, we could also ask ourselves here, has Simeon Barrow just taken Michigan State for a ride the last few weeks or the last few months? Which I think is very in play. And you hear all the time, you know, how great of a kid Simeon Barrow is, how nice of a man he is. Like, you can still be a nice person, but still make some very selfish business decisions for yourself. And guys, with the money at stake, again, I almost don't blame the kids. Look, Simeon Barrow is a fine player. Don't get me wrong. Is he an Aaron Donald, though, where he's going to get $40, $50 million throughout his career? I don't necessarily think so. When there's a time to start cashing in right now in college, hey, sometimes you got to do so by any means necessary. The very popular story so far this offseason is Caden Proctor. Okay, the Caden Proctor story goes like this. Grew up in Iowa, five-star recruit, went to Alabama after being committed to Iowa throughout high school, and then after his freshman season at Alabama, he commits to Iowa. He gets a huge NIL bag from Iowa, and then before he even practices for the Hawkeyes, guys, he goes back to Alabama. But he doesn't have to pay a dime back of that Iowa money because that is also the problem with college football. There's no contracts. There, there's nothing saying that you have to give any money back. It, it is nasty business out there. So after Simeon Barrow enters the portal over the winter, 
from what I understand. He got taken care of financially, and now here he is back in the transfer portal window. So did he just kind of take a a good old ride, a good old bending over of Michigan State's NIL coffers here the last few weeks? Very well could have. We will get our final answer if he does go jump shit because, well, odds are if he gets a nice offer from one of these SEC schools, as it is presumed, Michigan State could probably offer, guys. Michigan State isn't a poor school here, but if he does get a matching offer from Michigan State and still decides to abandon ship, well, that's that's going to be a bad look. But then again, at the end of the day, if you're raking in six figures, who cares how bad of a look it is? If only there was a certain organization that could maybe put a stop to this. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, they're very, well, could be and should be one day. This is going to keep happening, not just at Michigan State, but all around college football. They desperately need some guardrails, some guidelines, or as simple as just contracts. Because, again, guys, this is professional sports. But what is different between the college game and what you see in the NFL? Contracts. Like you just don't have guys willy-nilly dumping their name into free agency every two or three months in NFL because, well, there are, again, contracts. We're using the C word here. Folks, we will be back with more in a hot second here. But first, need to talk your ears off about Monopoly Go. That's right, one of my favorite gaming apps out there right now. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime, and the scoreboard is not looking too good. You're feeling low, not sure you or the team can pull out that win. And that's when you got to dig deep, lift up your head, and say to yourself, well, it's time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heist, and take as much money from my friends as I possibly can. Can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's a Monopoly game you love, but on your phone, anytime, with tons of new twists, including leaderboards and how you compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do, like you can play on countless Monopoly boards, you can make your friends bankrupt, you can smash their landmarks with a wrecking ball, or hey, hike up your rent and charge them for your iconic properties. Or if you're just actually a decent person, when you play the game of Monopoly, which, yuck, uh, you can work with your friends to crack open community chests in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb that leaderboard. So what are you waiting for? Get out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go right now for free at the App Store or Google Play. Also need to talk your ears off about eBay Motors. Folks, passion, drive, that is what drives all the folks at eBay Motors. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. We're talking superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you are looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or it's your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the price, sorry, with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that huge win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to you as customers. Now let's get back into the mix here. Thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in, for listening. Or, hey, if you're one of the few people that are watching live on YouTube right now, thanks a lot for staying up this late at night with us right here. Uh, Someone uh, actually typed in, do you ever take a vacation, LMAO? No, content never sleeps, baby. Absolutely not. So, all right, as we get further into the transfer portal, that's not the only name. Simeon Barrow is not the only name so far today. Marquis Lowry. He enters the portal and with somehow two years of eligibility remaining, even though he's entered college, I think in 2011 is when he first played at Louisville. Anyway, nevertheless, he's out. Now, this is a cornerback that has played 15 games total in the last three years. What we've been saying about Marquis Lowry year after year is we're hearing good things about him in practice. All right, this is a good depth piece, maybe even a guy that could push for a starting role if he could stay healthy. Those last two words, stay healthy, obviously the problem with Marquis Lowry. So we're wishing him a healthy career. We're wishing him a happy last two years of his collegiate time. But yes, that that is um, that's a bummer because well, we never got to see him pan out in a healthy manner. 
playing multiple games in a season, it seems like. But guys, this is one of the position groups that we are kind of concerned about. Uh, and this is even before Eddie Pleasant goes in the portal yesterday. This is even before Marky Lowry goes into the portal. And I know that these two names that we just rattled off, they're not necessarily like Sauce Gardner. Okay, this isn't Dark Quest and Narden Trey Lanes entering the portal, but still, with how the cornerback room is right now, you need some D E P. T-H. You need some depth at that position. Right now, what you got, we can presume it's Chance Rucker. The true sophomore coming in, he's going to take care of one of those starting cornerback positions. Maybe on the other end, we've hypothesized Dylan Tatum, but it seems like Dylan Tatum might be more of a safety or a nickel role so far this year. So, okay, um, maybe it's going to be Chuck Brantley a guy that is very familiar with Michigan State fans. He had that iconic play as a true freshman against Michigan in 2021. But since then, has kind of had the same career that we've seen with Mark Hugh Lowry. Like, yes, he's a solid player, but quite often hurt. And look, Jeff Brantley is a very exciting player. He, he thumps like he's a 220-pound strong safety coming up the A-gap on a blitz every single play. But his body is not built like that. He's like, what? He looks like me out there. 165 pounds soaking wet, except... My 165 looks starkly different than a Chuck Brantley 165. I've, I've got a little more cushion around the edges here. But nevertheless, you play Power 5 football, you hit as hard as Chuck Brantley does, you're going to be injured quite a bit here. So what does this do for death? I, that's almost a non-rhetorical question here because Mark Hilaro is one of those death pieces you can count on. But now you have uh, young guys Andrew Brinson, yes, Kari Crump still around, Caleb Coley still around, although he might be more of a nickel guy, but... Jalen Thompson, and we're talking the cornerback Jalen Thompson, the true freshman Jalen Thompson, not the defensive end Jalen Thompson, although the defensive end Jalen Thompson might have to play some cornerback at this rate. Uh, you also have Samar Melvin, but I like what I just rattled off is a bunch of names that we may know, but we haven't necessarily seen play a lot for Michigan State. So, yeah, I, again, like I, I don't mean to be chicken little here and say we should panic about every single name entering the transfer portal. But going into this spring window, cornerback was one of those three positions that we constantly harped on. It's that position, it's wide receiver, and it's also anything to do with pass rush. All right, now you could add defensive line to that too because I think another death piece would be nice to add just so you have someone behind Derek Harmon, Daquan Douse, should either of those two guys go down. But that's where we're at with the cornerback position is uh, Marky Lowry. He's out of here. Uh, so that is the latest in the transfer portal for football. So that's that's where we're at right there. And again, I, I think that Michigan State is keenly aware of this. We've seen them go out. They tried to get – oh, my God. Now, now I'm blanking on the cornerback's name, the guy that came from by way of North Carolina to Texas A&M. Now he's at UNLV. Last name Grimes, perhaps? Oh, my God. I can give you the guy's name any other day, but this is the joy of doing a live show on YouTube. Uh, if you know who I'm talking about, please comment. Put me in my place. And then also with wide receiver, too, we've seen them try with TJ Sheffield, the guy out of Purdue. Uh, Tony Grimes. Thank you, LFG. Yes, it is Tony Grimes. So we've seen them try to get players, and whether it's admissions or grades or not, kind of fall apart there, but yes, yeah, still expect Michigan State to be active here in the spring portal window. And guys, to keep it more fun, this these will not be the only four names that we see here this week. After the spring game, you can expect a lot of kids to enter their... Uh, okay, oh, I'm sorry, hold on, let me rewind. We'll edit that part out too. Not a lot of names after the spring game, just more names. Because at that point, after the spring practice session, that's where you kind of really understand where you are in the pecking order. And Hey, they're still, I think, a little more than a week after um, the spring showcase on Saturday ends where guys can enter their names. So, yes, it's just kind of begun. But, yeah, Simeon Barrow, Marky Lowry, the two big names so far. All right, who wants to switch sports here? Who wants to talk basketball? Because uh, this is just getting fascinating all over the board here. Uh, but first, I need to talk all your ears off about Game Time, my favorite ticketing app out there. And we're not just talking sporting events. No, we're also talking concerts, theatrical performances. If there is a ticket for an event you're going to, find it on Game Time. I love Game Time for many reasons. I'm going to hit you with two of them. One, 
They love to save you money. Whether it's their flash deals throughout the week, you just open their app, you find out, okay, what are the hot tickets on sale right now? That's going to save you money. Or if you're a procrastinator, you're walking up to the venue the day of or even an hour before the show where the sporting event starts, the last minute ticket deals are second to none. The second reason I love game time, it is so easy to use, guys. I am a dummy when it comes to technology. It is so simple even for me to use, all right? You're not going to rummage through your email after you buy the tickets and wonder, oh, my God, what are I going to get here? They're sent straight to your phone. It, it is super easy. So what are you waiting for out there? Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKED on college. All one word for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. It's last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, so let's keep the live show rolling here. We're going to talk shooty hoops because – uh. Chucky Hepburn, he shockingly, at least to me, I don't know if Wisconsin fans feel the same way, but based on their reaction on Twitter, I would assume that they were a little shocked with this too. But their starting point guard, he enters the transfer portal. Now, players enter the transfer portal all the time, especially in the Big Ten. Why do we care about that over here in East Lansing? Well, I'm glad you asked, guys, because, hey, there's a gentleman by the name of Frankie Fiddler right out there in the corn belt of this beautiful country, out of Omaha. He's a big wing, averages 20 points, roughly seven-ish rebounds per game. He's in the transfer portal. Michigan State is courting him. There's hot competitions between Michigan State, Creighton, Nebraska, and Wisconsin for Frankie Fiddler's services. Now, what also is interesting about Frankie Fiddler that I'm sure a few of you guys know so far is that him and Chucky Hepburn aren't just both from Omaha, they were high school teammates over in Omaha. So after all the visits take care of themselves with Frankie Fiddler, it was presumed, you know, by industry experts, guys that know things about things, that it's a two-horse race between Wisconsin, okay, and Michigan State. Now, why Wisconsin? The theory was that Frankie Fiddler wants to get back with his old high school teammates. So now that Chucky Hepburn is out of the mix, well, does this open the door for Michigan State, which by all accounts had a very strong visit with Frankie Fiddler about a week ago. So this could mean good news that Chucky Hepburn, he's out of Wisconsin. That takes a major pro out of the list for Frankie Fiddler's pros and cons list between Michigan State and Wisconsin. Guys, things could be all just popping up green here. Now, however, there are two schools of thought as we move forward into this conversation. One of the schools I named was Creighton. For those that don't know, Creighton is in Omaha. They're from Omaha. And for those that don't know, because this actually might be a real surprise to a lot of fans out there, Creighton's NIL is incredibly competitive in college basketball. Like what, what they were able to spend last year on some big transfers is like almost on the level of the blue bloods that you would expect of like, you know, Duke, Kentucky, Kansas. It wasn't like just completely on that level, but it was right behind. So Frankie Fiddler and Chucky Hepburn actually now in the portal to be a package deal to come back home and play for the Blue Jays. Guys, that's where my mind went first and foremost when I heard that Chucky Hepburn was leaving. It was kind of my right side of the brain was, okay, this is good for Michigan State. Awesome. Screw Wisconsin. They just lost their best bargaining ship with Frankie Fiddler. But the other side of the brain was thinking, hold on a second. Could this could this actually blow up entirely Michigan State's face? And this could be a sweet homecoming for these two kids. Now the day goes on. All right. Because this this happened many hours ago, guys. We're recording at 1130 at night. As the day goes on, you're starting to hear rumblings of, hmm, there's a school in the state of Kentucky that may have lured Chucky Hepburn out of Wisconsin and is going to pay a nice sum of money to him. Hmm. But they don't want Frankie Fiddler. They're not connected to Frankie Fiddler at all. So maybe Chucky Hepburn and Frankie Fiddler, it just wasn't meant to be. You know, the high school was the only time that they were ever going to be teammates together and they're still going to go their own separate ways here. Could that be what's going on? Is that Chucky Hepburn is actually going to go to an ACC school that is maybe going to pay him top dollar? And that Frankie Fiddler, he's caught in the middle. He's thinking, well, I just had a lovely visit with Michigan State. 
Okay, Wisconsin, yeah, they were at the top of my list, but hmm, I don't know. My buddy's not there, and the school that my buddy's going to, they're not really interested in me. Could I go home to Creighton? I suppose I still could. They would welcome me with open arms. Could I go to Nebraska, the other school I visited? Sure. But that last school I visited, of those four, Michigan State, they really left a good taste in my mouth. Could that, folks, be what is happening? No, really, I'm asking you. Like, could that be what's happening? Like, the transfer portal is so bat bleep insane that I'm not reporting anything what's going on. I am just kind of like Charlie Day and Always Sunny. I'm trying to connect the dots here and seeing which way is pointing up and where things are turning out green and white. But that that's your roadmap to Frankie Fiddler turning out at Michigan State. Is by starting off with Michigan State not really in the lead, but just by process of elimination and a big one being eliminated there. I, there there it is. Now, we're going to end here on a nice little press clipping that Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo, you may have heard of him, he had on the Tim Stout radio show in the Lansing area. They talked about a bunch of things here, but one of the, like, just the more odd storylines of this offseason for Michigan State basketball is we haven't heard much from A.J. Hogard. Like, yeah, he, he can return for another year based on his quotes after the Michigan game, like we've been saying up and down the last few weeks. It seemed pretty definitive that he was going to leave Michigan State after this year. But now here he is in the Portsmouth Invitational Tournament, or some tournament in Portsmouth. It's an NBA prep tournament for college seniors to get ready for professional ball. You still can keep college eligibility while playing in this, but him entering that tournament – you, you kind of think, okay, well, he's just going to move on to pro ball. Now, Tom Izzo on Tim Stout's radio show did say A.J. Hogard can come back, but it won't be here at Michigan State. So I guess I like I, I guess that puts a nail in that, supposedly. I don't know. I'm talking to myself right now like a crazy person. Um, I, I, I guess that means that it's all done, but just a very odd – Departure for A.J. Hogard from Michigan State, like just lack of communication of even a Twitter graphic like, hey, it's been real Michigan State on the next things. Good luck and everything. I, I don't even need the good luck from him. I just need the acknowledgement that he's moving on. <laughs> like this whole mysterious end to the career where he's not saying that he's leaving, but everyone knows that he's leaving. Even the head coach is saying that he's leaving and he's never coming back here. I, I don't know, but then again, like, is it kind of a fitting way for all this to end? Because it's been a perplexing, <laughs> it's, it's been a perplexing college career for AJ Hogard. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's been a, it's been a journey here. Uh, Aaron writes in, "What's the deal with lack of portal talk for basketball? Any thoughts on other potential targets, and if Izzo would actually pull the line?" So. What I've been like reluctant to talk about here, just because this is one guy reporting it, is Jim Comperoni over at On3. Does incredible work. Jim Comperoni, one of the best in the business. He has said that there is an upcoming visit for Trey Townsend. That, that is the Oakland University Horizon League Player of the Year coming up shortly. Now, I haven't been able to confirm that with anyone else. That is just one guy's reporting, but that is what else is going on in the transfer portal. But why there's a lack of portal talk? I, we, we try to talk about the portal, but... There's one problem. Hard to talk about something that really doesn't have any traction going on. So far, it's just been Javon Hadley talk that they've been you know, communicating with. He went elsewhere. He's over at Louisville. Could be a future teammate of Chucky Hepburn. And then the Frankie Fiddler talk. But it's all up in the air right now. He's going to announce any day now is what I keep hearing. So uh, between now and Memorial Day, we'll keep you up to tune on Frankie Fiddler. But, no, that's a good question. I mean, Believe me. I want to talk. I want to talk transfer portal stuff with Michigan State basketball because they need to make some moves here. But that's just the 4 one one on that. Appreciate the question, Aaron. Um, <laughs> so it writes in. Over under on Chuck Brantley going into the portal again. I don't I don't think he will. I think it was a quiet portal session for him the last time he entered this winter. Whereas with Simeon Barrow, I got a very hard time believing that his phone isn't being blown up right now. Or or has already been being blown up by SEC schools to this point. I think he's had a very busy phone pretty much ever since Mel Tucker has left campus here. So I, I think it's two different um, scenarios where I think Chuck Branley, he entered the portal and wasn't really too busy of a phone line for him. So I think, well, and also too, now with uh, Marky Lowry out of the mix, I think even if not for an NIL thing, if it was also a playing type thing too, 
I think the door is open itself here for Chuck Brantley, too. So, folks, thanks a lot for hanging out with me tonight. Really do appreciate it. In, again, this beautiful laundry room, we are going to be back in the home studio. The next time you see this face, it will be after the spring showcase. We're going to overreact big time to everything we see in these drills against air, in these running clock scrimmages at the end. And if any portal news happens, guys, you know where to find it. Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white. Thank you all again for watching, for commenting, for listening. You guys are all truly the best. Love you all. I genuinely mean that. Thank you all so much. Guys, take care of yourself this weekend. Go Green.